By the Atlantic Ocean coast in northeast Brazil is a huge expanse of sand dunes peppered with a string of lakes, a place of breathtaking beauty, the Lençóis Maranhenses. Paradoxically, this desert gets more rain every year than Scotland. Thousands of freshwater lakes then form in the hollows of the dunes, turning the white desert into one huge tropical beach. This water makes it possible for some rare but tenacious creatures, human beings too, to survive in this extreme environment. But the wet season is only one part of the life cycle of the Lensois marinensis. The water disappears almost as quickly as it appears. During the dry season, the sand becomes once again dominant. The Lensois Maranensis are the product of a unique combination of water, sand, and wind, creating a mysterious ecosystem with many secrets still to be revealed. It's an astonishing landscape of magnificent nature. It would be a perfect laboratory for any biologist. But for me, it's more than that. This is my land. I was born here. I love this place. I love the people that live here. I would say that a uh, type of the ecosystem is quite special as well. It's unique. We cannot find something like this in the world. Located near the equator, in Maranawa State, the dunes that form Lensois Maranensis National Park cover a surface area of over 1,500 square kilometers. Lensois Maranensis is Portuguese for linen of Maranao. And it's true that these dunes of white sand, stretching as far as the eye can see, do look like a sheet negligently thrown over an immense bed the size of the landscape. It is now May, the end of the rainy season, and water is the dominant feature. Fifteen years ago, while he was working on his doctorate, Givanildo Miranda spent over a year camping among the dunes. This Brazilian biologist and reptile expert wrote the first in-depth study of the fauna of the Lençóis Maranensis. The scientist has done truly pioneering work, devoting his life to the study of this little understood but fascinating region. Since then, the poor student has become a respected academic, more than happy to guide his students barefoot through the dunes and share his passion for this magical place. For Hoyana and Romazio, every day spent in Givanildo's company is yet another unique chance to improve their understanding of this little known ecosystem. You are in the very heart of a, a huge transition of biomes in Brazil. Uh, we are in the transition of the Amazon forest, uh, Cerrado, which is a savanna-like vegetation, and Caatinga, with a, a type of arid biome that you have here in Brazil. And uh, this is why here in this park we have a mix of species uh, from uh, those different type of biomes and this make it very very special very particular and uh, besides we have uh, an additional transition that is the transition from the sea to the inland uh, under strong influence of cerrado vegetation apparently this land could look like a dead land no life around here only dead logs but if you look carefully, you're going to have amazing surprise. There are a lot of life hidden in this area. In this area, we have two species of lizard that can, uh, can be found. 
Uh, it's a one lizard, the Echinemidophorus genus. It's a lizard that's adapted to dig holes and, and then it can thermoregulate when it's too hot for, for them. They can just uh, shout here, it's Tropidurus. It's a lizard that's not able uh, for this digging stuff, but uh, it, it's able to hidden and, and control its temperature, uh, just looking for some shelters under logs and, and little pieces of materials that are around the park. There are a lot of life as well. We have uh, a turtle that probably is active now because it's active only during the rain season. And uh, we have also tadpoles of many frogs that reproduce in this, this type of environment. And we have fish. Despite the presence of water, vegetation is still rare among the dunes. It's sand which predominates. Yet Jivanildu knows that life, albeit on a small scale and with a fragile hold, does hide in and around these lakes. There are a lot of mystery because most species are poorly studied, and I'm pretty sure that as we increase our knowledge about them, we are going to find out amazing and very interesting stories to tell. The scientist research has brought to light an unexpected particularity about this mostly mineral environment, the presence of a large number of aquatic creatures. Pleurodema diplolister, a small frog no bigger than a fingernail, has particularly caught his attention. It takes a real expert to spot this minuscule amphibian in its natural environment. It divides its time between the sand into which it burrows in order to protect itself from the heat and the lakes where it finds its food. But these tiny Batrachians rarely venture into deep water in this season because one of their main predators will most likely be found there, hunting. Rare and protected, the Peninga is a turtle with an insatiable appetite. The biologist knows that during the wet season, the turtle spends most of its day underwater, hunting down its prey. Its diet consists mostly of small fish, insect larvae, and tadpoles. It is constantly hunting for food because it must store the maximum amount of energy and then reproduce before the water is all gone. The scientist has noticed that a lot of the denizens of these temporary lakes live a speeded up life, having only a few months in which to accomplish their biological life cycle. Givinildo Miranda knows that the least of them is as important a part of the ecosystem as any other. He considers even the most minuscule creature of this environment worthy of study. Late in the afternoon, when the sun's rays are less fierce, the Peninga changes lakes in search of new prey. The center of the national park is an oasis of greenery surrounded by dunes, which the inhabitants call an island, Quimara dos Britos. It's the only place in this part of the desert which offers a little shade, so it's here that the professor and his students have decided to bed down for the night. But to get there, they must first cross the Rio Negro, the park's only permanent river. Without it, there will be no oasis or village at the heart of the dunes. Visitors are rare here, but always given a warm welcome. The best I want. 
Hello, Raimundo. How are you? Very well, thanks. Do you remember me? Well, of course I do. You know who I am? The frog catcher. <laughs> These are my students, Hoyana and Romazio. Pleased to meet you. Raimundo, do you have somewhere we can put the horses? Yes, just behind. Thanks. See you in a bit. Raimundo is the patriarch of the village. His grandfather, Zé Brito, was the first person to settle in this place almost a hundred years ago. At the time, his native region to the east of Maranao was suffering a terrible drought. So the nomadic fisherman traveled up the coast by boat until he discovered the mouth of the Rio Negro. Amazed to find so much fresh water surging out of the desert, he worked his way upstream, discovered this oasis, and decided to settle here. Zé Brito and his family were the very first inhabitants of the Lensois Marinensis. And thus was born Quemada dos Britos, the hamlet named after the family. What has changed the most, in your opinion? The dunes, which are encroaching on us more and more. Have they buried homes? Yes, mine, my first house. The dunes took it from me. So the dunes are encroaching more than they used to? That's right. Because it rains less? Yes, less and less. But it's rained a lot this year, hasn't it? Yes, it's rained, thank God. Raimundo, has the work that the people do here changed too? There's more livestock farming. Twice what there used to be? Yes, there's more than twice as much. We've had to stop growing crops because of the dunes. We advise people not to grow crops in order to slow down the dunes' advance. I see. You're trying to hold back the constant encroachment of the dunes. That's right. Crop farming and livestock are, in theory, forbidden in the park because they destroy the fragile vegetation which keeps the dunes steady. Yet the authorities show a certain amount of tolerance for these activities because they have neither the means nor the will to rehouse families which have lived in the park for generations. Mm -hmm. 